for the future. Our Torah portion this week is grounded midway through the Israelite journey. They've left Egypt, and very soon the Israelites will arrive at the Promised Land. Anticipating their arrival, God instructs Moses to send 12 leaders to scout out the land. And we can learn from their essential words, both what they did well, and just as importantly, where they struggled. When the leaders returned from their mission, we read, We came to the land you sent us to. It does indeed flow with milk and honey. But the news quickly changes tone. The people who inhabit the country are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. And they later elaborate, the country that we traversed and scouted is one that devours its settlers. All the people that we saw in it are men of great size. We saw giants there, and we must have looked like grasshoppers. We must have looked to them. As you can imagine, this report stirred the emotions of the Israelites. Where was God taking them? What was the point of leaving Egypt? How could they possibly survive? Two of the spies, Joshua and Caleb, countered the group. They responded, the land that we traversed and scouted is exceedingly good. And if the eternal is pleased with us, God will bring us to that land, the land that flows with milk and honey. Unfortunately, the people responded to these words of hope by pelting Joshua and Caleb with stones. I hope that no one will pelt me as I hold up Joshua and Caleb um, as our heroes. I don't see anything flying out of the screen. Let's compare and contrast the responses of the leaders. What values do they hold dear? The 10 spies are skeptical of God and more importantly themselves. They see themselves as incapable and weak. And while God already delivered promise, they see trouble and they lead with their fears rather than their hopes. And then we have Joshua and Caleb. They appear to be grounded. They recognize the tremendous potential of the land. They understand the weight of their actions. They recognize by meeting God as a partner that they can flourish. They have the courage to accept that which they do not completely understand. If I had to guess, both Joshua and Caleb had anxieties about what would lie ahead. It's natural to be nervous, but they stood tall and proud as they inspired their people rather than holding them back. We've come a long way since our days of wandering in the wilderness as Israelites, but of course we can always grow further. And in pandemic times, it has sometimes felt like we are wandering in the desert. Caleb and Joshua inspire us to stay grounded, to value our words and actions, to gear ourselves towards looking forward, not back. We can embrace the unknown. We can recognize that our destination will be full of blessing, even if undefined. And rather than playing on fears, we can define ourselves by the love and compassion that we share. We know that we are one, that together we are resilient and strong, and that we will find the promise. With our values as our guide, there can be no other way. Kenya Healer and Son. Thank you, Rabbi Michael Berg, for your meaningful words. As a reminder, uh, we'll be using the Zoom polling feature to vote on each motion. If you have any trouble using the poll feature and wish to register your opposition to a, uh, 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 to a motion, um, please say so in the chat feature, which you'll find at the bottom of your screen. The minutes of the last annual meeting were included in the AGM materials sent to you when you registered. I'm advised that Kevin Barwin is making a motion to adopt the minutes of the 85th annual general meeting held on June 19th, 2019. And I'm advised that Sarah Caspi seconds it. Please register your votes in the poll on the screen by clicking in favor or oppose and submit. I see that the, um, uh, the motion has been approved. Thank you. I now call your attention to Federation's annual report, which was, which was also in your AGM package. We're proud of what we've accomplished, so please do read it. And I thank all of you for your support because we did this together. As one of the many cost-saving measures Federation has introduced, the annual report is only available electronically. Next. I am advised that Harold Fetter is making a motion to, to appoint GGFL as auditors for the Jewish Federation of Ottawa for the fiscal period 2020 to 2021 
and I'm, I'm advised that Barbara Farber seconds it. Please register your votes in the poll on the screen by clicking in favor or oppose, and then submit. Again, the motion is approved, so thank you. I'm advised that Karen Palliou is making a motion to approve the acts of the officers and directors since the June 19, 2019 annual general meeting and all acts, contracts, bylaws, proceedings, appointments, elections, and payments enacted, made, done, and taken by the directors and officers. And I'm advised that Neil Presner seconds the motion. Please register your votes in the poll on the screen by clicking in favor or oppose and then submit. And that motion was approved as well, so thank you. It is now, it is now my pleasure to invite Hartley Stern, Dr. Hartley Stern, immediate past chair and chair of the nominating committee to present his report. Uh, thank you. And uh, before I begin, I would just like to um, spend a moment uh, thanking um, our outgoing board member, uh, Senator Gordon. Uh, uh, you, you did a terrific job. I personally, um, when working with you, appreciated your insightful comments. You were always clear and cogent and, and spoke directly to the, to the motion and had insights that um, were ex extremely well received and we will miss you. Um, so thank you for all of your efforts. Um, I'd also like to thank our, our new board member, um, newest board member, Jacob Shabinsky. Um, although I don't know you personally, know of you, and uh, I think the board is very fortunate to have you, and on um, behalf of everyone who's on the board, would like to welcome you. And finally, I'd, I'd like to draw your attention to the nominating committee report uh, that was posted online um, and is part of your AGM package. And I gather there are no additional nominations, so I would like to move that um, we accept the nominating uh, committee report, and I'm advised that um, Debbie Halton Weiss seconds it. And so, um, speaking as, uh, in order to get this done in the same fashion, I'd ask you to um, vote to either accept or uh, oppose it, um, and then uh, submit. Okay. Um, my interpretation, Michael, is that the motion was approved. Um, I'd also, I'm, I'm very pleased to announce that um, in, um, in June 2021, uh, when we, uh, as we assume, Ian Chairman will be nominated and elected to the role of chair, and that Karen Palliou, um, most gratefully, has agreed to have her name stand for vice chair and as we also assume, will be nominated and elected chair in 2023. So with Michael and then Ian and then Karen, we, um, in the true Jewish connection, truly are going from strength to strength. Um, and um, am delighted that this community is going to continue to be well-led far into the future. Uh, and uh, Yasha Koch to each of those um, three individuals. Um, I'm assuming that now, Mr. President, that I keep moving on and I'm, <laughs> without any further uh, requirements, uh, moving on to the um, community awards. And it has been my pleasure and honor to um, uh, bring forth and congratulate the winners of our community awards. Uh, volunteers are our community's strength. It's one of the things that I have appreciated living in Ottawa more than any other community that um, we have an extraordinary group of, of, um, of community volunteers um, and they work tirelessly and without um, requirement for, for their own self-interest. It is entirely for the benefit of others around them and we owe all of them an enormous grat a debt of gratitude. Um, and one of the highlights and probably the most enjoyable part of being the past chair is the, um, my honor to um, thank the, these amazing volunteers. 
Um, and uh, other than this year, when I can't see their smiles personally, normally I get to see them and, and hear them express their words. Tonight, we're not going to be able to have each of the recipients speak because of the challenges of doing this on Zoom. Um, but you will be able to read their remarks um, um, in the Jewish Bulletin, on the Jewish Bulletin website, and we will publish these and let you know how on social media. So I'd like to begin with this year's Student Leadership Award. And, um, and you're seeing pictures of these two individuals who um, I had actually not ever met them. I've spoken to them on the phone. And I will tell you, they're absolutely delightful, intelligent, two young people that when I spoke with them on the phone to uh, let them know that they had won the award, they were humble and um, grateful and intelligent and charming. Um, they are uh, exceptional people. You're looking at Kara Lebenzon and Daniel um, Kuhnreich. They are um, from the Jewish Law Students Association for the lawyers on, on the call at the University of Ottawa. And Daniel was the 2019 to 2020 president and Kara the 2019-2020 vice president. Now working together, second year, uh, second year law students, along with their executive board, they brought the Jewish Law Students um, Association to incredible levels of participation and success, organizing Shabbat dinners, uh, happy hours, special guests. They mentored incoming students um, and secured funding for JLSA programs through fundraising and grants, um, and all really on their own initiative. Um, moreover, um, CARE established links between the JLSA and the Bore Alaskan Law Society, the Association of Jewish Lawyers in Ottawa, ensuring that Jewish, um, young Jewish law graduates in Ottawa will continue. They'll have the opportunity to continue to be involved in the Jewish community. Daniel also served on the University of Ottawa Student Union and helped Hillel Ottawa create positive relationships on campus. A Yasha Koch to both of them, to both of you rather, and please, um, although you can show your applause with a little hand signal um, when, it's, when, it's, when it's on the bottom of your screen, um, please show your um, your applause um, visually. And I gather now we're going to have 10 seconds of applause when you're unmuted. Um, that's what I'm told will happen. Mazel tov. Mazel tov. There is one of these things that you can put on here. Self. Here, I am unmuted. Ah, there we go. Okay. So, um, my next um, award, the next award to present is the Fryman Family Young Leadership Award, established in 1988 uh, in honor of the Fryman family and with their own exceptional contributions to Ottawa and Canadian Jewish life. It recognizes a member of Ottawa's Jewish community under the age of 40 who has contributed actively to the community. The recipient uh, of the Prime and Family, uh, Family Young Leadership Award also receives the Lawrence Greenberg Young Leadership Development Award. And this year's recipient, as you can all see, is Adina Lieben. Lieben. Adina is an active volunteer who has assumed many leadership roles, incredibly, in the Ottawa Jewish community since her arrival in the city um, more than a decade ago. She was a co-founder of JNet, a, gra a grassroots uh, group of Jewish young professionals in Ottawa, which evolved into the current Emerging, Ge Emerging Generations Division of Jewish Federation of Ottawa, and was co-founder and chair of the Young Women's Leadership Council. She has served on the boards and or committees of numerous uh, organizations as treasurer, including Federation, the Ben-Gurion Society, the Ottawa Jewish Community Foundation, Hillel Lodge, the Ottawa Jewish Community School and Early Beginnings. Hard to believe that you can do that all before 40. One of her recent achievements was uh, the founding of uh, Sisters on Board, a new foundation event for women. And with exceptional leaders like Adina in our community, our future is indeed very bright. Ayasha Koach to Adina, and I think we now have 10 seconds when you're all going to be unmuted to uh, applaud again. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's your
Thank God. Uh, <laughs> to be proud of mommy. Tough Community Volunteer Award, um, which recognizes outstanding and active volunteers for their lifetime. Um, and lifetime of service dedicated to the betterment and enrichment of Jewish life in Ottawa. And I'm hoping I'm unmuted. This year's uh, Shem Tov Award is shared by a couple and um, uh, Dorothy and my closest friends in Ottawa, David and Sharon Potov, um, who are just phenomenal people and they have served the community in so many ways. Sharon, Sharon, just to highlight some of them, Sharon recently served for three years as co-chair of the Jewish Federation of Ottawa's annual campaign and is on the Jewish Community Foundation Board and is part of Federation Life and Legacy Team. She's an active volunteer with Jewish Family Services Street Smart Program, as well as Ten Yad and the Hever Kedisha. David uh, has served on the boards of Federation, the Ottawa Jewish Community School, Congregation Machsiki Hadas and Camp and A. Brith of Ottawa. He has created viable business models and has helped in the business models, the Ottawa Jewish Bulletin, Ottawa Bad Hakashrut, and helps ensure the financial stability and organizational vibrancy of Mahsiki Hadas. Sharon and David were the 2019 Jewish National Fund honorees and also participate in community fundraising uh, initiatives such as LL Lodges Biking for Bobbies and the Solway Jewish Community Centers Biathlon. Now, what makes David and Sharon such deserving recipients is the wide range of organization and projects which that they are involved. But moreover, they are willing to take on anything. No matter what you ask them, the answer is always yes. And my own personal perspective on this, that which really is uh, the centerpiece of all of their um, amazing volunteerism, is that despite every success they've had in their professional lives, despite every success they have in their personal lives, and whatever success they have in their community lives, they retain that sense of humility that they're just um, a volunteer trying to help uh, somebody do something better. Um, they do not seek any personal attention for themselves, but we're all very happy to give it to them because they deserve it so richly. Um, and to be counted amongst their friends is truly a great honor for me and for Dorothy. So, congratulations, Yasha Koch, David and Sharon, and we have 10 seconds to give that round of applause again. Yasha Koch, Mazel Tov. Proud of you. So, um, again, thank you and congratulations to all of the um, amazing and well-deserving award winners. Uh, oops, sorry, that's uh, Andrea's line, and I'm supposed to turn this over to Andrea. Uh, thank you very much, Hartley, and really congratulations to all of our award winners. Um, at last year's AGM, we shared Federation's new five-year strategic plan with the community. And from July through March of this year, we were fully focused on achieving all of our objectives in year one. To give you a few examples, thanks to the incredible leadership of our campaign chairs, to, to Rabbi Bulka and to Karen Pauliu, and powered by a final year of the Challenge Fund, whereby Barbara Crook and Dan Greenberg, Steve Greenberg and Roger and Robert Greenberg generously matched every new and increased gift to the annual campaign. The 2020 annual campaign was really successful and we raised just over $5.1 million for Jewish Ottawa. At the same time, we were using funds from the previous year's stellar campaign to, be con to begin construction of the Jewish superhighway, filled with meaningful Jewish experiences, vibrant Jewish life, and with no one left behind. Microgrants. Microgrants were a new initiative and they fueled 19 unique and diverse programs for every different demographic, really and truly enhancing the community's vibrancy. Jewish Jumpstart, an incentive program to encourage community members to join a synagogue or temple or the Soloway Jewish Community Center was fully subscribed with 108 memberships involving over 300 individuals and family members. 
We were working diligently behind the scenes to ready the Generations Trust campaign for Jewish education, a historic endowment campaign to make Jewish day school more affordable. We joined together with the Ottawa Jewish Community Foundation and 14 other wonderful community organizations in Ottawa in the Life and Legacy Initiative to encourage after lifetime giving. In other words, optimism reigned supreme and we were on a roll. And then on March 13th, like the rest of the world, we were compelled to pivot instantly and overnight. We marshaled every possible resource and worked tire tirelessly with two critical objectives in mind. The first is that the vulnerable would be cared for. Within days, our board put together a $350,000 emergency fund for things like food security and enhanced infection control to keep the residents of Hillel Lodge and Tamir participants safe. We launched Jewish Ottawa Helps, a Facebook group with over 1,200 members, and we worked really hard to ensure that if anyone had a need, it would be met, no questions asked. In the first weeks of the crisis, the truth is we did everything but raise money. We convened the leadership of community organizations and brought our rabbinic leadership together. New partnerships were formed and resources were leveraged as people united to address needs and share expertise. And at the same time, we called over 1,800 community members just to check in and see how they were doing. And then we pivoted once again to meet our second objective. Although really it's less of an objective and more of a question. When we emerge from this crisis, what do we want our community to look like? We realized early on that the decisions we make now, the decisions we make today, will define who we are when this crisis is over. And so we launched the emergency campaign for community resilience. The response to the emergency campaign, as Michael will explain in a few minutes, has been inspiring and it's been humbling as people are digging really deep to selflessly help those who are hurting more than they are. And if you have not yet made a gift to the emergency campaign and are in a position to do so, normally I would encourage you to make a gift, but we will have some exciting news to share on Sunday. And so if you are still considering a gift to the emergency campaign, I do it on Sunday or Monday and stay tuned for the email. I started my report by sharing how our community was thriving before the COVID crisis. Thanks to the success of the emergency campaign, our exceptionally generous donors, our stellar leadership, board chair Michael Pollowin and campaign chairs Rabbi Bulka and Karen Palu, an excellent board of directors, a dedicated and tremendous staff, incredible past chairs, many of whom are here tonight, in incredible volunteers like deserving award winners Daniel and Kara, Adina and Sharon and David. Jewish Ottawa will be defined not by the current crisis, but how well we have responded to it. Every decision made, every dollar raised, every person giving, every volunteer helping is holding the line and keeping the foundation of our community strong and adding to our resiliency. So when this crisis has passed, and it will, the answer to the question of what we want our community to look like is crystal clear. And thanks to all of you, Jewish Ottawa will be vibrant, it will be filled with meaningful Jewish experiences, and with no one left behind. Thank you. So Andrea is supposed to call on me now, but that's okay. Uh, I'll call on myself. Um, Andrea, thank you so much um, for everything that you do uh, for Jewish Ottawa. Um, you are truly an inspiration. Before I begin, I have some thanks and congratulations that I'd like to extend as well. I'd like to echo Hartley and his thanks to Senator Gordon for his work on the board of directors uh, for uh, uh, the past number of years, his wisdom and leadership in the role of Federation campus chair. He wanted to leave a little earlier. I twisted his arm to stay with us a bit longer and he did, so Sandra, thank you. And welcome to our newest board, board member and my neighbor, Jacob Shabinsky, whom I know will do a wonderful job as our new campus chair. I'd also like to take the opportunity to thank and commend Federation staff at all levels. 
Andrea Friedman and our board uh, and, it, and it's the board committees on how each of them have responded to this crisis. They've been among the hardest working people I've ever had the privilege to work alongside and in difficult circumstances. Last year when I began this role, I spoke a lot about the remarkable street I grew up on, as did our Vice Chair Ian Sherman and past Chair Stephen Kimmel, among others, Edgecliff Avenue in the Carlington area. I spoke about how the families on that street represented the spectrum of Ottawa's Jewish community, how our parents participated in that community, and how those values got passed down to us, how that street developed leaders in our community. I don't want to strain the metaphor, but in thinking of our community in the age of pandemics, I found another parallel. For the kids who grew up there in the 60s, all, almost all of our parents had experienced some or all of the depression. All of them had experienced World War II, either up close or from a distance. Many had experienced the Holocaust. These events were all life-changing. They informed the decision-making of our parents for the rest of their lives to a greater or lesser extent. I will not put these last months of COVID-19 on the scale of any of them, but it has affected people. Many have lost friends and loved ones. Many have suffered emotionally from the isolation we have all lived through. Many have lost jobs. We will all come out of it changed, adult and child. This pandemic will affect our life view forever. But we've learned a great deal about ourselves and our community. You heard Andrea talk about the creation of Jewish Ottawa Helps on Facebook. It connected people to help each other. It has over 1,200 members helping with everything from masks to grocery trips. There is grassroots caring from people delivering for the Kosher Food Bank and people and organizations helping us celebrate our holy days and Shabbat. Our schools and our shuls went into the virtual realm in days, bringing community together when we couldn't be together physically. We've protected our most vulnerable at Hillel Lodge, Tamir, and through the Jewish Family Services. Thanks to our incredibly generous community, our emergency campaign for community resilience has raised over $2.2 million in days and weeks, not weeks and months. We still have a way to go to reach our goal. So pass the word. We need these funds to ensure our community remains strong and protected. But our community has stayed together and learned again the importance of it to each of us. My parents' generation experienced war, depression, and Holocaust. But they emerged from all of these to build the community we have today. And so it has been in these last months, and so it will be as we go forward, that we will emerge from the shadow of the virus and come into a sunshine that will see our community strengthened even more. Last year, I suggested we needed to rekindle the spirit of Edgecliff Avenue. In my experience over these last months, that is precisely what we have done. I'm fond of saying that it will take all of us to enhance our foundation for the future and that our forebears, who often had nothing, did it, and our children and grandchildren expect no less of us. But what we have done over the last months is not to ask what our community can do for us, but instead we have done what we could do for our community. Now we just need to keep doing it. Thank you very much. And it is now my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, Eric Fingerhut, the president and CEO of the Jewish Federations of North America. Prior to joining JFNA, Eric served as the president and CEO of Hillel International, where he led the organization's drive to excellence resulting in doubling the numbers of students engaged by Hillel each year to over 130,000, and the total funds raised each year to nearly $200 million. Eric has also had a varied and distinguished career in public service and higher education. He served as the Chancellor of the Ohio Board of Regents, as well as Ohio, uh, Ohio State Senator, 
and represented Ohio's 19th con congressional district in the US Congress. He received a Juris Doctorate from Stanford University Law School and a bachelor's degree from Northwestern University. Um, and I think um, our vice president, uh, Leslie Kaufman, would like me to say at this moment, go Wildcats. He and his wife, Amy, have two sons, Sam and Charlie. Uh, everyone, please welcome er Eric Fingerhut. Thank you so much, uh, Michael. I'm not reverberating, am I? Good. What a pleasure to be with you. Uh, each of your officers, everyone who's spoken, it's so, uh, so moving. Thank you for letting me be part of this meeting and, and hearing the incredible story. Listen, I got to tell you something. If there's ever been a meeting that doesn't need a keynote speaker, this is it. You have totally blown me away with what you've done, what you've accomplished, what this community stands for, what your values are, what your plan is, what your strategy, what your leadership is. I know Andrea, getting to know Michael and Harley and all of you and seeing the awards, it blows me away. So since you don't need a keynote speaker and you don't need to hear a message, I'll just tell you a joke. Uh, so so here, here's my favorite Jewish joke. Andrea might know this, so she won't tell anybody. Uh, so uh, Adam and Eve, uh, we're in the Garden of Eden, walking hand in hand in the Garden of Eden. And Eve turns to Adam and says, do you love me? And Adam says, who else? So that's the whole joke. Now you're all on mute, so I can't hear you laughing, but I'll assume you are. Um, and uh, I love this joke for two reasons. I love this joke. The groan, somebody groan. Come on, laugh. I, I love this joke for two reasons. One is it's short, and I don't, I can't remember long jokes, uh, so I get it. The other is, who else is the story of federations? Really, if you think back on everything you've talked about in this meeting, everything you've been told about the accomplishments of last year, everything you've celebrated, who else, who else but an organized Jewish community that comes together for the purpose, I wrote it down, of building a vibrant community of, of, of creating meaningful Jewish experiences, of making sure no one's left behind. Who else does that except uh, a Jewish federation? You know, we, we, let, we, we tease ourselves sometimes about the alphabet soup of Jewish life. There's all sorts of Jewish organizations out there. We all have acronyms. Everything's got a J in it. You at least know what the J usually stands for. Uh, you may not know what the rest of the, uh, of the acronyms stand for. And there's some truth to it. We are definitely one of the most organized uh, ethnic or religious communities in the history of the world. But it's at this moment when we realize the power of being organized, when we know why we are organized, because none of us could do what you have accomplished alone. No matter how generous you are, no matter how hard you work, no matter how creative you are, none of you could have done alone what the collective uh, has accomplished. You know, uh, it's not just that we do it together, it's also that we do it year in and year out, right? You were there to respond when this crisis happened because you were there. You know, the UJA Federation of New York, which is, of course, the New York City is the largest federation. You can imagine about a third of the Jews in, uh, in the United States live in, uh, probably in North America, live in, in New York City. They used to have a slogan that we were there on 9-11 because we were there on 9-10, right? Which says it all. It says it all. They could not have responded to the crisis that befell that city on 9-11 had they not already been organized. You could not have responded as you did to this COVID crisis, you could have mounted an emergency campaign and responded with the resources uh, that you've responded. You couldn't have called the, the thousands of people you've called unless you already had your officers in place, your board in place, your, guy, your, your bylaws in place, uh, had been doing the work of community. Uh, you know, uh, in uh, the, my bio, you mentioned that I was the head of Hillel, and I know that, uh, that, that this is a community that cares deeply about what happens on college campuses and is supported a great deal. My tenure at Hillel happened to coincide with this rise of BDS activities and anti-Israel uh, uh, activities on campus. You know all about it. I don't have to tell you. We don't need to add another source on top of all the other sources that we're, that we're talking about tonight. 
But, but you know, because I was out of Hillel and because people were scared about what's happening on campus, I would have people call me up, generous people, donors, and say, I want to give money to help fight BDS on campus. And I'd say, great, that means you're going to help us pay for Shabbos dinner. You'll help us pay for the bagel brunch uh, on Sunday. Uh, you'll help us pay for the welcome back barbecue when students come back. You know, the school, no, 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 you said, it's, I'm, I'm glad you do those things, Eric, but I want to fight BDS. I said, well, how are we going to fight BDS if the students don't already know each other, if they haven't come together uh, to meet each other uh, and to get to know the staff uh, and to build the, and, and to elect their officers and to build their team? How a community cannot respond in times of crisis if you haven't built a community first. Uh, and so that's what's so impressive uh, about uh, what I've heard tonight in this meeting is that you know the power of community every year, all the time. You have a five-year plan. You didn't know that in the first year of the plan you'd have a pandemic uh, and one of the worst economic crises uh, uh, in, uh, in our history. But, but you, you had the plan because you know the power of community and you know the role of federation. I have the great privilege of telling you uh, that you're not alone, that the same way that your collective works in Ottawa to create the vibrant community that you want to have to take care uh, of those uh, who are in, in need, that there are 145 other federations across North America that have been doing the exact same thing over the course of these last few months. They have responded as you have responded by first of all, utilizing all the resources you already had at your disposal, the agencies, the support systems, the networks that you had already created. And then they also went above and beyond uh, to raise additional funds. The 146 Jewish federations in North America, annual campaigns total somewhere in the range of a billion dollars. Uh, that's year in and year out. On top of that, uh, over this course of this emergency, including the resources you've raised, about another $175 million uh, has, been, uh, has been raised for this crisis need to make sure that no one is left behind. It's really an extraordinary story that only an organized federation system could possibly do. But it's not measured just in money. As you, as you mentioned, you made the phone calls, you reached out to people, you, you convened people, and so have the federations across North America done the same thing. And we, had, on your behalf, have done so. Uh, at the continental level as well. Uh, every week I sit together with the heads of Hillel and the heads of the day schools and the heads of the camps and the heads of the human services agencies and the heads of the aging agencies and their board chairs meet uh, uh, every other week uh, to compare uh, the, the strategies uh, and to make sure that we are working together uh, to respond to the needs of the community. We're about to launch another continental initiative because we know that so many of our fellow uh, 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 Jewish uh, uh, members of our community are out of work, Jewish professionals and others. How do we help respond to that? These are the kinds of things that we respond to collectively uh, and not necessarily uh, individually. Uh, so, uh, so you are part of a powerful uh, collective here uh, and, uh, uh, and you are going to be, uh, uh, and you are also part of a powerful collective uh, across the continent. Uh, you know, Andrea, uh, said something that uh, that actually is uh, uh, is is quite moving to me, and that is that the truth is that we really don't know exactly what the 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 community is going to look like in the future. Some things are changing uh, just temporarily, and they'll go back to the way they were. Some things may be changing more fundamentally. Um, uh, you know, we don't uh, we don't really know, uh, but we do know. Uh, that as, uh, as the rabbi taught us in the Devar Torah earlier today, uh, early in this meeting, that, that uh, it takes the courage uh, to be optimistic, to be a leader, to forge ahead, as uh, Joshua and Caleb did, as the rabbi taught us. Uh, they were the two who said, let's go. We can go into the promised land. We can conquer the land. It's a rich land. It's a good land. Uh, we know that it's the land that we've been promised. We can go forward with that kind of optimism. I feel that optimism uh, in, uh, uh, in, this, uh, in this room tonight, uh, and it's an optimism that inspires me 
um, and that I know will inspire others in, in our community. Uh, one of the great uh, 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 Kabbalist sages of uh, Jewish history was known as the Baal Shem Tov, uh, also called the Besht. Uh, he, uh, uh, he, he famously, uh, you know, there, there'd always been the, there, there's always, there'd always been great Sadiqim, great teachers, but, but at his time when he came along, the, um, the mode of teaching Jews and trying to get people to stay in line was, was harsher, right? It's like, if you don't do this, you'll be punished. If you don't do that, you'll be, um, and, uh, and the Baal Shem Tov taught the, the rabbis and the teachers of the day, that that's not the best way. That drives people away. What brings people together uh, is, to, uh, is to teach with love uh, and to, uh, to teach uh, with positive, uh, uh, with the positive nature. And so one of, one of his uh, uh, famous teachings, which I've always loved, uh, is the Baal Shem Tov said, you know, we're, we're, we should love God, all Jews should love God, even though we don't completely understand uh, what God is. Uh, or how to find God, or even how to relate to the idea of a God. But we should love God. We should love Torah, even though we don't know every single word, what it means. There's some parts of Torah that are hard to understand, that are inexplicable. It's taken volumes and volumes and, and centuries to explain them. But we should love Torah anyway. And we should love every Jew. We should love the Jewish people, even though... We don't know them all. Some are pretty, some are not so pretty. Some are tall, some are short. Some are nice, some aren't so nice. Some say the right thing, some don't say the right thing. Whatever, it, whatever the reason is, they are our Jewish people, and we love them. You know, at this time, you are showing your love uh, for, uh, for the uh, entire Ottawa Jewish community. By being part of the Jewish Federations of North America, you're showing your love uh, for all of the Jewish people across our continent and through our partnerships uh, in Israel uh, with the Jewish Agency and our partners around the globe with the Joint Distribution Committee, with the Joint, you're showing your love to the Jewish people around the world in the midst uh, of, this, uh, of this very uh, challenging crisis. So I just simply want to say to you that from what I've heard tonight, uh, you, you have, you're showing your love for your community, and I want to tell you that I love you too because it's so powerful uh, what uh, what you have done when we say our prayers for community on Saturday morning we say Misha Oskim to all those uh, who care for the needs of the community in truth Bemuna uh, with 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 heart with love Bemuna with truth you this is a community that cares for your fellow uh, uh, fellow uh, community members with truth with kindness uh, with openness and with welcomeness and uh, and I'm just so proud. Uh, to be able to be here at this important annual meeting to congratulate the officers, to congratulate the awardees, and to thank my dear friend Andrea Friedman, who I hope you know is a great leader, not only of this community, uh, but of the entire Federation system. Thanks for including me. Eric, uh, thank you so much for your wonderful words and your insight during these difficult times. JFNA's hard work and leadership over the last three months have, has been extremely helpful and inspiring. And I tell you that I love you too, but my wife is on this <laughs> call. Um, our first virtual AGM has now come to an end. I'm advised that Jeff Lax is making a motion of adjournment, and I'm advised that it is seconded by Nikki Shapiro. Please register your votes in the poll on the screen by clicking in favor or opposed, and then submit. The motion is uh, uh, approved. We are adjourned. Um, take care and be well, everyone. We will now unmute for anyone who wants to stay on the call and schmooze. Have a wonderful rest of your evening.